Hello and welcome back to Guillotine 18th Century Chemist Theater. Today we are going to take a, uh, I guess, a more advanced look at acids and bases. We talked a little bit before about the idea of an Arrhenius acid and base, and we'll review that today. Uh, but, but we can go beyond that, and it gives us a little bit more flexibility, especially when talking about solutions and solution chemistry. So way back in the day, we talked about Arrhenius saying that uh, acids are things that donate protons and bases are things that donate hydroxides. Uh, and a little later, uh, Bronson and Lowry came up with a slightly different way of looking at it. They still looked at acids as, as proton donors. Uh, but they said, you know what, a base can be anything that accepts a proton. And that was a more inclusive definition. Um, and, and that allowed for things beyond hydroxide to act as bases, and that's what happens in nature. Um, so though a lot of people think of bases as just hydroxide, there are other things that can take a proton out of play and hence neutralize the acid. Um, so our, our friends had a little bit of conversation about that. So there's nothing wrong with the idea of an Arrhenius acid and base. Um, it just really depends on your perspective and how broad of a definition. In fact, it goes beyond that even. Even Gilbert Lewis himself came up with a, a more inclusive definition of acids and bases that come down to the idea of electron pair donors and acceptors, but we don't really need to worry about that at this level. And so just some background about some of the more advanced ideas about acids. Uh, sometimes you'll see acids written as H plus aqueous, and other times you'll see them written as H3O plus aqueous, the hydronium polyatomic. And that's, again, that's another sort of matter of perspective. Some people uh, just like to write H plus knowing that when it's in water, it's going to jump on water and form that hydronium. And other people like to write the hydronium. They're both really equivalent terms as far as I can tell. Now, if something only dumps out one proton, it'd be called monoprotic, something like hydrochloric acid. But if you dump out more than one proton in solution, something like sulfuric or phosphoric acid, those would be called polyprotic. And of course, uh, if you only dump out two, then that's a type of polyprotic that would be known as diprotics. And the interesting thing about that is the more protons an, an acid has to donate to the solution, the tougher it is going to be to neutralize them because they're going to be dumping out those protons along the way. Um, so by far the easiest acids to work with are, would be monoprotic, something like hydrochloric acid, but we can account for the other ones. A couple other definitions, the idea of an oxy acid, that's anything where the hydrogen is going to come off an oxygen. And, and we saw this before with the idea of polyatomics, like phosphate. If it would make phosphoric acid uh, based on the Lewis dot, all those hydrogens are going to be coming off oxygens. And organic acids have a special idea of coming off a carboxyl functional group, like acetic acid. We've talked about that before, um, where R represents the rest of the molecule. And uh, you've got the functional group carboxylic. And so that carboxyl group uh, is going to dump off its proton. And that's how that becomes an organic acid. So that would be a good uh, Halloween costume. The idea of R. And then, you know, you could be a, 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 the rest of the molecule and your friend could be a functional group. Think about it. Keep that in the back of your mind for next year. So now, you know, on to, on to the meat of the show. The idea is that um, we can actually, through the idea of Bronson-Lowry, come up with sort of a generic equation for an acid donating its proton. So if you had an acid in water, it could donate that proton to water and make hydronium and then the A minus whatever that uh, anion or polyatomic was. And so what we can make now is something called a conjugate acid-base pair. And, and these sound very complex, but they're not. It's just simply a pair that's separated by the acceptance or donation of a proton. Uh, and the thing that can donate a proton is considered the acid part of it, and the thing that can accept the proton is considered the base. And those two are considered conjugate acid bases then. For instance, in the drawing above, uh, the HA and the A- minus would be a conjugate pair because the HA is able to donate a proton and the A- minus is able to accept that proton. And so that's the idea of a conjugate acid base there. And the other one would be, in this case, water and hydronium. Now, water is something called amphoteric, which means it can act as both an acid and a base. But in this case, uh, water is going to be gaining a proton and forming hydronium. So in a, in a way, it has, uh, from a Bronson-Lowry point of view, accepted that proton. And so in a way, it's acting like a base. And so the idea of conjugate acid bases really are, are kind of fluid, and it depends on the matter of perspective. Um, so like ammonia, for instance, uh, has has could accept a proton and become the ammonium polyatomic. And so that's an idea of a non-hydroxyl group. 
Um, so if you had perchloric acid, perchloric acid once it donated a proton would be the chlorate polyatomic, or the perchlorate polyatomic, I'm sorry. And that could again accept a proton back. And so just keep an eye out for the idea of conjugate acid bases. They're really not all that bad to deal with. You know, you just got to look for, the, you know, how, how do these things differ between gaining or losing a proton? I mean, if you were to pick up a tennis ball and call it a, a, call it a hydrogen ion, <laughs> and you're holding it in your hands, technically you're an acid because you could then donate that, that tennis ball away. But then, you know, once you've donated that tennis ball, you could accept another one, and that, again, makes you the idea of the bronzed Lowry sort of base. Now, Will it take that proton back, though? That's the question. And so you have to look in, at, into this, and this is the idea of sort of setting up what's the idea of an equilibrium, is that there's going to be a rate of the forward and reverse reaction. Because once that HA donates a proton to hydronium, hydronium could try to donate it back. And so whether or not this is successful will determine whether or not an acid is weak or strong. Um, and so you'll get, end up with an equilibrium between the formation of the products and the formation of the reactants. And this equilibrium will shift based on stuff. So it's a, if, if it's considered a perfect equilibrium, uh, you know, the HA and the water would be in equilibrium, the same rate of the production of hydronium as, as opposed to the decomposition of hydronium back to the acid and water. And so if the Ford reaction dominates, meaning that the water wants the proton more than the conjugate base does, uh, you're going to see a forward reaction continue, right? And so it, it's going to move all the way. You're really not going to see a whole lot of it going back. And so the idea is that in this case, um, it, it's going to be a strong acid. And a strong acid wants to get rid of its proton and not take it back, all right? And that's considered complete dissociation. And we've talked about that before. Hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid. But if the reverse reaction dominates, meaning that the... Uh, a minus wants it back, all right? The conjugate base wants it back. Well, then the reverse reaction is going to dominate and you're not going to produce that much product. You're not going to have that much H plus floating around in there. And that would be considered a weak acid then. This is, and we've talked about the idea of dissociation before, but this shows how, how that works. That's so the idea is that the conjugate base wants the proton much more. Um, and so it tends to dominate backwards. And, 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 and things like hydrofluoric acid or acetic acid would be considered weak acids. Please understand, please remember that weak acids can be very dangerous. Um, again, uh, breaking band, bad fans might remember hydrofluoric acid as the acid of choice. But even concentrated acetic acid can be pretty nasty. And so I think the best analogy I have for that is sort of think of this like, uh, you know, a kid at the bus stop, bus stop with his lunch or her lunch. And the chem bullies come up. Now, you know, if you don't really want your lunch and the bully comes up and says, I, you know, give me your lunch, you're going to happily give that lunch to the bully because you don't want the, the bratwurst or the, or the liver or the broccoli that's in your lunch. And that would be the considered a, a strong acid. You'd be donating your proton and have no desire to get it back. So if the bully looks at the lunch and is like, I, I don't really want your lunch, you're like, no, give backs, and then you run away. You're a strong acid. But if you really wanted your lunch, um, and, uh, and, and the bully takes it away from you, you're going you're gonna to flip out and start really trying to get your lunch back. And that's the idea of a weak acid. The weak acid is really probably more concerned with just getting the proton back and not donating it than actually giving the proton up and having it floating around as a hydronium ion. So the, the kid in the lunch, you know, that makes a lot of sense to me. I think that's a good analogy. So strong acids have weak conjugates, right? If you want to get rid of your proton, you really don't want it back. And so you're a pretty terrible base. Uh, because you don't want to accept it. Um, that's why the forward reaction is going to dominate. And weak acids are just the opposite. They have very strong conjugate bases. And so um, once they donate a proton, it's really good at getting the proton back. And that shows you the way that the reaction dominates. So our friends are going to dominate the, I mean, uh, they're going to demonstrate the idea of this uh, exchange of protons. And so the weak acids are strong conjugate bases. You, you've you've uh, awakened the giant. Hey, hey, Puzzle Cow's back. Hey, hey, what's up, buddy? Um, remember that, and we, we focus mainly on acids in this video, but the same thing happens with bases, too. You can have bases that are weak, um, and you can have bases that are strong that completely dissociate. So something to think about. You know, we focused on acids, but bases can do the same thing. Yes, it is magnificent. Puzzle cow it is.
<laughs> um, so what we're going to do now that we reviewed acids and bases is some of the more complex aspects of it. Uh, we're going to move on talk about pH for a day, and then we'll wrap up uh, these, this series of lessons by talking about the titration, a classic chemistry experiment. So thanks for watching, and have a great day.